Okay? You see what's happening? So th that then it will satisfy the differential equation. The other requirement is that WB must equal VB. Okay? Therefore, that puts a limit on what B can be. The B, uh, the B in the Y equation needs to equal VB over W. Okay? Now, in my case, what was the W and the K? Uh, what was the differential equation that we ended up with? Remember, it was... Uh, um, I erased it here. Uh, it was dq dt It was R dq dt plus 1 over CQ is equal to VB. So in my case, uh, my K was my R. And my uh, W was 1 over C. Right? So what's the final, final solution here? My final solution is Q is equal to so the, the Y stands for the Q. The Q is equal to A. A could be uh, anything it wants for now. E to the, what's B got to be? B has to be minus W over K, right? So uh, W minus W over K, that's going to be negative 1 over RC, right? W over k makes this 1 over cr, right? And then so it's going to be negative b over k. So negative 1 over rc times t plus the b is going to have to equal bb over w, and then w is equal to uh, 1 over c. So uh, vb over w, but w is equal to 1 over c. So that means c times vb. Okay. Now, we also know that the initial charge on the capacitor, let's assume the initial charge is zero. So when you put Q of zero, you say E to the zero is one. So you have A plus CVB, and the initial charge is equal to zero. So now that puts a restriction on what A can be. A has to be negative CVB, okay? So my final, final equation is going to be Q is going to equal, I can factor out the CVB Q is going to equal CVB 1 minus e to the minus T over RC. This tr should be an increasing function, asymptotically increasing Okay, when you put t equals to zero here, t equals to zero, you get e to the zero, it should equal zero. When you put t equals to infinity, as the time, as you close the circuit, as the time goes to infinity, what should it equal? e to the minus infinity is equal to zero, so it's equal to one. Right? So Q is equal to CVB. Okay? What's this thing RC called? We, we talked about it in the lab. You forgot already? It's the Greek letter what? Tau, right? And it has units of seconds. It has to have units of seconds because it's going to second, second is going to cancel. It's going to be unitless. And the tau is a measure of how fast the circuit reaches its uh, final um, state. 
So the charge will look like this kind of. The charge will start at zero, and over a time, certain period of time, it will reach its final charge, CVB. Okay? We could also pull up, uh, graph the voltage of the capacitor versus function of time. If we ch multiply, if we divide the charge by the C, you'll get BB1 minus E to the minus T over tau. Then uh, the voltage of the capacitor is going to increase. And the, it's going to approach asymptotically the voltage of the battery. Okay? How about the current in the circuit? How should the current ap appear as a function of time? Well, once you find the charge, you can take the derivative of that. That will tell you how the current varies as a function of time. I equals to dq dt. So the, the, what's going to be the derivative of that? Uh, minus, minus, cancel. 1 over rc comes out. Ah, oh, it's beautiful how this all works out. The uh, C and the C cancel. The current is equal to VB over R. And that's exactly what we said initially. We said the initial current is going to be VB over R when we first started it. And the current should asymptotically reach zero because the capacitor should eventually oppose the battery, right? So uh, the initial current should be VB over R, and then it should asymptotically approach zero, okay? And then how about the voltage across the resistor as a function of time? It's equal to IR. So if you multiply this by R, you get right. So the voltage across the resistor starts out as VB and then decreases. Okay. Now, if I plot the voltage across the resistor on the same graph as the voltage across the capacitor, What should they add up to at all moments in time? 